Hello, my name is Stephen Knight. Welcome to Lesson 2, Exploring Bookings from the Client Perspective. So to recap, in Lesson 1, we set up the bookings calendar in the bookings app of Office 365. We loaded the business settings. We created some staff. We added a service. We assigned staff that deliver that service. We recorded our operating hours. We published the calendar, and at this point, we have distributed it either by email or Facebook or on Twitter, or we've embedded some HTML. So our calendar is out there. People are able to make bookings. So we're going to have a look at this process now from the client perspective. If you need to recap the setting up process, head back to lesson one. Specifically, what we're going to be doing in this lesson is placing a booking as a client we're going to examine the emails sent to clients and staff, and we're going to have a look at a staff member's calendar who delivers one of these services, and we'll see that without any additional work from us, the bookings are appearing in that person's calendar. So that's the specific steps we're going to be running through in this exercise. Just briefly, the prerequisites we need to follow along and complete these exercises is we need an Office 365 account with the Bookings app available. We need a modern web browser, and we need the published booking calendar from Lesson 1. So we are now a client who has been emailed the link, uh, who has found it on our Facebook page, who has found the embedded code on a form somewhere that we've got, or a website rather, that we've got. So this is the form we published in Lesson 1. This is from the Booking app in Office 365. I'm looking at this in Google Chrome as well. So we used Edge in the earlier exercise. We're now using Google Chrome, the key being a modern browser. So my first step here is to select a service and you'll notice I can click the I for more information. The initial consult is actually a service that's built into the, the booking app tool. You can remove that if you want. And you click the I and we see the information here about it. So this could include or should really include a good little synopsis, which we would have set up in lesson one when we created the service. So I see the details and I've decided I want a uh, an Outlook and Time Management Seminar. So I select that, easy enough to do, and then I'll scroll down and have a look at what's actually happening in the calendar. Now, if I choose a day earlier in the week, so 14th, you'll notice this is greyed out. So I'm automatically getting some clues that a lot of your more skilled or even end users with basic PC literacy, if they're comfortable with Outlook or they've used any calendar tool before, they'll notice the faint gray compared to the bold days indicating not available. And we see here, we have a message, we have no other availability on this date. So we're getting this information that says, look, we're not available on these days. Now, if I go to Monday, now, I happen to know Dan doesn't work Mondays, and I specifically want to book Dan. And we see Dan Matthews here is not available. So I'll try a bit further. I'll go to the 20th. Now, my first clue that Dan's available is it says available. And so I'll choose Dan. Just recapping, I've just chosen Dan. And I see a range of time slots that might suit uh, I'm going to go with a nine o'clock time slot for a start. So this is a three and a half hour event, finish at about 12.30. Uh, so I've got my time slot selected. And then I can put in my details. And I'm actually doing this on behalf of uh, Mary, who is external to the organization. And I have an email address for Mary. So when you're doing this yourself, it would be good to have an email address that's not actually the staff member. So you can see separately the emails uh, and, and what actually happens with this. 
and so I'll put in a phone number which I've just made that up and an address and I can put uh, we need to discuss custom uh, requirements so that's all the client needs to do they've picked the day we've guided them in the picking the day process we've picked a time we're good to go we've even picked a staff member we don't have to pick a staff member but maybe we've worked with Dan before clients tend to want the same person back if they're happy with them last time particularly uh, people get to know your business if they're regular uh, in their support and service of your business now I'll click book it's working on it working on it as you're probably aware one of the friendly messages from the new SharePoint Office 365 Microsoft environment. Thank you for booking with us. We'll get a confirmation email and let's go OK. So what we've now got is a little uh, form here that we can use to reschedule. We can cancel. I hear some binging noises there. So let's have a look at the messages that have arrived. Looking at this first from the client's perspective, so I'm in Mary Externals mailbox and we now have an email from Office 365 from the booking app with the logo confirmed booking for Mary, the course call for price because I haven't quoted any prices. We have uh, the date and the date range based on the time we set in the booking. So the time range there, 12 9 to 12.30. We can also uh, manage the booking. If I come down further, I've got additional information. We've got an option for Mary to add this to her calendar. And if I click Manage Booking, it takes me back to the booking. And I could reschedule or cancel. Now, the cancelling being subject to booking policy that we set when we set up the booking options uh, in Lesson 1. So Mary can manage that there if she needs to. So again, just recapping, we've seen Mary gets a nice email uh, with uh, links and the ability to add this to her calendar. And you'll notice I'm not using uh, Outlook, but nevertheless, this has successfully added this into Mary's calendar. If we go and have a quick look here, we will see on the 19th, we now have a booking recorded in Mary's calendar for this event. And as we saw in lesson one, there'll be follow up emails to remind people that are involved that there are things happening as part of this. Now, moving on a little bit further here, uh, if I go to Dan Matthews here and I go to Dan's calendar and you'll notice here we have on the 20th, as well as it being in the booking calendar, it's put it in here. And this at this point, uh, we would accept tentative or decline. So it's treating it as a meeting. And we would accept that, or we might need to ring the, ring the client, or there would be whatever process you're going to have to actually manage these. Now, the other thing that happens here, what I've just brought up, is an email that's actually been sent to the account that owns the booking calendar. So whoever manages your bookings has this uh, email. And I can now see here that Mary's gone in and actually uh, raised a booking. And I can now manage that. And I can make sure that uh, Dan and the people that are involved get to follow that up and everything happens so so the owner of the calendar gets an email it goes into the calendar of the staff member and it sends an email to the client so everybody's in the loop so what we've done there is we've explored the very easy process of a client making an online booking 
we've seen how the booking tool respects availability information we've already entered in there, existing bookings and so on. So a client can't double book us. Uh, don't forget, as we saw in lesson one, there's the buffer there if there's traveling time involved for a lot of your services. Uh, we've seen the messages that everybody gets and we've seen the client can go in and revise the booking uh, if they need to. So all in all, not a bad start for the booking app. So to quickly recap, we have placed a booking as a client, we've examined the emails that result from that process, and we've seen that the booking has wound up in the selected staff member's calendar. Now, where to from here is I would suggest you actually work through lesson one and lesson two with your actual uh, Office 365 account. Also be aware through the help option in Office 365 and through the feedback link that you'll see in the bookings app in the web browser, you can provide suggestions and input to Microsoft uh, on suggested additional features that you'd like to have in the booking app. They're very responsive with Office 365 to end user suggestions. So thank you very much for your time. If you've got any questions from me, you can contact me as well via this, uh, via the resource that this video is published on. I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, thank you for your interest.